Have you ever opened Roblox and thought, this shit sucks, where are the good games? Why do I have to go out of my way to find hidden gems? And how are such terrible games on the front page? And you're not alone. And believe it or not, this is a sentiment shared with most Roblox users, including the creators that make those games. Roblox is interesting because unlike other platforms such as Steam or Epic Games, discovery on the platform is not driven by how liked a game is or how people feel about it. Rather, the system is confusing and kept mostly a secret from both players and developers, making the battle for discovery incredibly intense and very competitive. So let's break it down. There are four ways a game can be discovered. Homepage recommendation, charts, search, and advertisements. And I'll talk more about that last one later. There's a lot of speculation and bits of facts floating around about how discovery works, but the common consensus and truth that Roblox gives is that discovery comes from a game's analytics. More specifically, there are three key metrics Roblox looks for, engagement, retention, and monetization. If you want just a quick answer and want to click off the video, here's your summary. The top games are ones that keep players playing for longer sessions, having them come back and spend more money. A game's engagement is defined mostly by how long a player stays in a game. One metric to look at is the average session time, which defines the average amount of time spent per session, starting from when a game is open and to when a game is closed. An easy example is comparing two games, game A and game B. Game A's average session time is 15 minutes, while game B's average session time is five. Therefore, game A will have an edge on the algorithm against game B. Engagement can include daily, weekly, and monthly active user metrics, but they are for the most part irrelevant to placement and the algorithm in a byproduct as to how well you do. The other two key categories, retention and monetization, do hold more importance to Roblox. If engagement is based on how much time a player spends in a game at once, retention is how likely that same player is to return in the future to play more. When speaking about retention, you can break down players into two different groups, new users and returning users. When somebody plays the game for the first time, they are considered a new user. And once they play the game again and forever on, they are considered a returning user. There are three retention stats to keep an eye on. D1 retention, D7 retention, and D30, with D standing for day. Day one retention is the percent of new users that play again after one day. Day seven is the percent that play again after one week. And day 30 is the percent that play again after one month. Roblox really, really likes to see good retention because it signals that a game has a stable player base that is willing to spend more time long term. Retention and engagement go hand in hand. So if a game has both high retention and high engagement, it means that the average user spends a lot of time in the game, both short and long term. The oddball stat of the three categories is monetization because rather than measuring a user's time spent, it measures money spent. Monetization is complicated because it's not just a single graph showing how much money each person spends. Yes, there is a graph for that, but the three most important graphs are not that, but rather conversion rate, ARPPU, and ARPDAU. It's kind of confusing, but let me just break it down a bit. Conversion rate is the percent of players that ever spend money on a game. For example, if a game has a 3% conversion rate, that means 3% of all players have spent at least one Robux on the game. ARPPU stands for the average revenue per paying user, which is just a fancy way of saying how much money an average paying user spends in the game lifetime. ARPDAU stands for average revenue per daily active user, which is a similar metric, except it includes non-paying users in the average as well. Let's bring back that conversion rate of 3%, for example. If we say that an ARPPU is 300 Robux, that means that 3% spends an average of 300 Robux on the game. And yes, Roblox loves to see high engagement and high retention on a game, because that means the platform can stay active and it keeps Roblox relevant. That being said, like every other company, their priority is profit and games that have a high conversion rate and high ARPPU make a boatload of cash and Roblox wants to grow that cash so they can earn more from their cut. As such, higher profiting games get a huge advantage in the algorithm. Okay, so that's a basic rundown of what the key stats are, but how can we predict how likely a game is to be popular? Well, better stats alone aren't the answer. You can throw around numbers and say this is good and this is bad, but that's not really the definition. Instead, Roblox compares your stats against similar games in a benchmark. 
Benchmarks are tiered based on the top X placement of whatever your game is. So for example, this benchmarks for top 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, and 100,000 games. If your retention, engagement, and monetization stats beat the benchmark, the algorithm moves you up the, to the next tier. So think of the algorithm as a tiered system rather than just a linear graph. This also means that if more games do better than yours over time, you can go down tiers. Each tier is also broken down into three segments, the bottom 50%, top 50%, and top 10%. So for example, if your game is top 10% of the top 1,000 games in engagement, that means that your engagement is better than 90% of games in the similar benchmark and where your game places within the benchmark segment can affect how much it gets discovered in the algorithm. Let's say your game is top 1,000 in retention and engagement, but for monetization, you're in the top 3,000. This means your game will not move up to the next algorithm tier until you're above the top 3,000 monetization benchmark. This form of discovery works for homepage recommendations, front page charts, and search results. But we forgot something. And remember that fourth way of being discovered? If you didn't, it's advertisement. Advertisement is an oddball of the four since it's not driven by how good a game's stats are, but rather how much money you spend on advertising and how high the click-through rate of your icon is. A common misconception is that if you advertise your game, you automatically get more popular, and that's just not how it works. Rather, advertisement affects only two things, how many users you're getting to play your game at least one time, and how many people you can get to play your game at the same time. And these stats are called DAU and CCU. With algorithm-based discovery, your DAU and CCU, which stands for daily active users and concurrent users respectively, go up organically if your game gets recommended more. But with advertising, your stats are almost completely disregarded as long as you spend enough money. Advertising is a great way to test the waters and get some initial players to get an idea of what your stats look like. But advertising does not necessarily increase engagement retention or monetization, it artificially places users into your game. If your game does have good design though, then good engagement, retention, and or monetization can follow, which can place a game higher in the algorithm. Relying on advertisements to keep a player base though, is not scalable or healthy and only lasts as long as your budget does. So let's go back to the beginning. How are there so many terrible games on the front page? Like seriously. And it's not necessarily because they're objectively good games by sentiment, but because they're good games by numbers. Pet Simulator 99, Adopt Me, and Slap Battles are all examples of games that engage and retain users that pay a lot of money. How fun each one of those games are really boils down to your own opinion, and you might have a good opinion or a bad opinion of those games. I also want to draw a comparison between Roblox and Steam. It's interesting because a game on Steam can do well based on how much fun a user is having. Or in other words, if you want to have popularity on Steam, your game just needs to be fun and rated well, and your stats such as engagement can simply be recommended secondary to that. But Roblox is on the opposite side. Your popularity on Roblox is determined strictly by numbers, and a game's fun factor, quote unquote, is really just a possible byproduct. That's just something I like to consider when making any game. Anyways, I hope I was able to clarify how Roblox's discovery and featuring works. And if I missed something or if I was incorrect somewhere in the video, make sure to let me know in the comments. Thanks guys.